we are in my storage building today to uh, have a little science experiment. We are playing around with electroplating. I am working on some of uh, the uh, fresh air vents I got for my 1970 Dodge pickup and I want to I want to get them working really good and prevent further rust on them to make sure they work good for a very long time. So uh, got everything set up in here. Let's let's take a look at it. All right, here is what I am working on. This is the fully assembled one of them, the uh, fully assembled fresh air vent. What I'm redoing is the mechanism right here, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm not going to worry about the shaft here because I can't take, I don't want to risk taking this taking this disc off and uh, putting it back on and it being really really floppy or risk breaking this trying to get it off. So I I will be knocking off a little bit of uh, uh, rust right there probably, but uh, I will not be electroplating this this shaft, but. What I'm doing is uh, electroplating this entire assembly that this goes onto. Because if this, these pivots right here, if they're not, let me pick it up. If they're rusted and corroded and not really moving like they should, then you're going to have problems. So that's why I'm redoing these. I'm also have a, uh, I will have a separate video on redoing these, but. These, uh, I'm taking out the uh, pivot rivets right here and I uh, actually have some Chicago screws that I found that work perfectly with this. So there's it fully assembled. Here is unplated and here is plated. This came out very, very nicely. This can be polished if you want to, but uh, the, this is going to be uh, one of those unseen parts, but I wanted to protect them against against future rust, so they're getting plated. And everything turned out really good. Only word of advice I have is if you have small screws like this, um, see if I can get my camera to focus on it. Let's see, there you go. If you have little screws like this, uh, try not to leave it in a vinegar bath too long, because. Uh, if the screw's rusted, those threads are going, to, are going to disappear, which is what happened with this screw. So I will need to get another screw. But, going back to these, they came out very nicely. Once again, the, this can be polished, but I'm not actually going to be polishing these. It's just come out really nice. And then here is unplated. And these are flash rusting, so I will need to put them back in my vinegar bath to, no, yeah, put them back in, in the vinegar wash to, uh, to get, that, get that flash rust off and kind of scrub it a little bit. So uh, let me get those cleaned off and ready to drop in, and I will be back in a minute with my full setup. Oh, and here is the uh, electrolyte solution for the 10 zinc plates that I have right there. So uh, I will be back in a second. All right, I got my setup ready. I'm using two D-cell batteries. This is a, a 10 zinc uh, strip from Eastwood. I tried to use a homemade solution, which is right there. Uh, it did not really work. So I went ahead and uh, bought that uh, Eastwood electrolyte solution, which is what this is. And this stuff does have sulfuric acid in it. So you do have to be careful. That's why I'm wearing these uh, really good uh, uh, gloves so I got my parts cleaned back up I've got a wire system set up right here uh, ideally you, you I think you want to use a copper or stainless steel or something like that something that the uh, uh, tin zinc will not plate to but uh, that'll be fine and let me get it let me get stuff set up on here and then dip it in and let you watch it work all right I got everything ready Wiggle that around. Let me do me just one thing. All right, I got three of the parts on here. Let's go set it down in there. I de ideally you don't want it touching the bottom, so I got one thing touching. Let me move it. All right, got them in there. 
So let's hook up. We got the positive connected to the, I believe that's the anode. And then the parts. Let's see if I can get a good view of this. There we go. That's a good view. I believe uh, uh, smaller parts will will plate faster than bigger parts. So um, depending on how many you're doing at once and how big the pieces are is uh, how long you have to wait. I think uh, read through the instructions. I think could take anywhere from uh, five to thirty minutes. But uh, like I said, it depends on the part you're actually plating. And the last few I've done, there has been a buildup of uh, some kind of film. You can actually see the residue of it laying down right there. You can actually see it building up on that on that on that screw pretty good. But um, that stuff comes off real easy. It's almost like a dust that actually comes off. So I'm going to leave this in here for a little bit and uh, be back to clean it off in a, in a little bit. All right, the parts have been in here for about five minutes, so let's get them out, rinse them off, and see what they look like. Disconnect my negative. That's what they look like before being cleaned. Just give them a good rinse in, the, uh, in this uh, distilled water, and let me get these cleaned off. Well, here is the end result. Uh, I didn't really get a perfect uh, plating on all the pieces. Um, probably because of my method of cleaning was the vinegar, which is right here. Uh, if I would used my sandblaster, which is right there, uh, probably would have gotten a better coating, would have gotten them cleaned better and gotten a more uniform uh, plating on everything, but uh, it definitely worked. These are just gonna, like I said, these are for the fresh air vents. These are going to be unseen. And the way I'm rebuilding these, I will not have to worry about these getting stiff ever again. So uh, here's all the pieces. This is the electroplating part. Now, let's play with electrolysis. Rust removal with electrolysis. I uh, played with it for a few minutes to make sure my solution I was trying to do my plating in uh, was working for electrolysis and it does work. Let's see if I can get this to focus on it, there it is. This was not even probably 10 minutes not even 10 minutes in that solution and this was really really rusted up uh, and the rust was just falling was just falling off was just falling off of this thing without even being a uh, probably 20 minutes and i'm going to show you how it, what it looks like this along with that bolt goes for the uh this is the uh, j bolt mount for the spare tire bracket so let me get this on my on the on my hanger right there and show you what it looks like all right here is the electrolysis set up in a clear container so you can see it in action it's actually really cool to watch um jed scott over at scott speed shop uh not too long ago uh, did this electrolysis on an engine block uh, and that, that is just a massive process which is really impressive that, that that he was able to get that set up and functioning on something that big but uh, this is on a smaller scale you see it's on just on my bench top and I uh, went on Amazon and picked up this uh, DC power supply this can go from 0 to 30 volts and uh, up to 10 amps and that's perfect for electrolysis and electroplating and 
really a th I think anodizing too I could even I could even start playing with that but let me show you and same thing with this as with the electric plating you do not want the part touching the anode you do not want the two pieces touching inside this is not touching you see it right there it's not touching this is my sacrificial steel and this is the part to be cleaned sacrificial steel gets the positive electrode and the part to be cleaned gets the negative same thing with the electroplating electroplating the and the uh, positive goes to the anode and negative goes to the part and let me clip this up put that around back clip it up And the bubbles means it's working. It's actually really cool to see this working in action. And I'm going to leave this going for a few minutes. I'm going to leave this going for a few minutes. And then bang on it. Just pick it up and just kind of do like that and you can see all kinds of rust bits falling off and you can already see a good bit on the bottom from when I did the bolt so let me let this sit for probably I'm gonna say 10 minutes I'm, I'm gonna let it sit for 10 minutes and then I will come back and uh, show you what it looks like and kind of give it a good old tap and watch all the stuff fall off of it All right, it's been about 15 minutes, so look. See all those flakes falling off of it? This does work off of line of sight, so the back side is gonna look better than the front, yeah. So, it's, it, it would take a good while to get something like this cleaned. I would honestly probably do about another uh, 45 minutes, honestly, or longer. Before I would call this finished. And uh, or 45 minutes to an hour, really, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, there it is. Let me actually... Actually, let me take that out and scrub it a little bit and clean it off and see and see what it looks like. Well, here's the bracket. You can see how it's how the rust is just, is just flaking off and falling off. That would eventually happen everywhere on this thing. This side didn't really get too much. Like I said, this is it works off of line of sight. So uh, where, wherever the sacrificial steel is facing inside of your uh, your uh, electrolysis uh, tank um, is whichever spot's going to be off first, which was this spot right here. And you can see how it got it nice and pretty. You can see the pits really good on there. But, um, I'm not going to be cleaning this the rest of the way because this is just going to be a bracket up under my truck. And the rest of the frame is uh, not powder coated or painted or pretty or anything. So I'm not going to worry about it. So this, along with that bolt there, will be uh, just bolting up under my truck. But uh, for small parts that are delicate or for a real easy, cool rust removal method, I highly recommend electrolysis because it's really fun to work, really fun to mess with. And I highly encourage you to get one of these uh uh dc power uh what's it uh, dc power supplies uh let's see let me disconnect that make sure i don't have anything touching it goes from zero all the way up to uh it's supposed to go up to 30 volts unless right there yeah it's got it's, it's got a fine tune knob goes all the way up to 30 volts plus almost 31 but uh, basically 30 volts and all the way down to zero. 
this this is just a cheap uh, around 50 50 to 60 dollars i think and there's other other ones available i wanted one that was uh 10 amps up to 30 volts so it could it could withstand a little bit more because a lot of them you see are five amp uh five amp 30 volts but highly recommend that so you don't have to use a battery charger there you use electrolysis and then the electroplating electroplating would have turned out better if i had sandblasted my parts but i did not but and the electrolysis to make this solution i think i put i think that's i think this is like a like a i forget how big that container is but i put uh i think it was four tablespoons of arm hammer super washing soda uh in there got it all mixed up and then that was that was the solution i actually do have a little bit of uh uh cleaning strength vinegar in there because i was trying to make the uh electrolyte not electrolyte i was trying to make the electroplating solution that that just did not work but it still works perfect for uh the uh, electrolysis i do not recommend putting the vinegar in with the uh electrolysis solution it probably doesn't hurt anything but the only thing you need to add is the arm hammer super washing soda well there's the video uh our little uh science experiments for today uh the electroplating turned out good but could have been better if i had these pieces sandblasted instead of uh, uh cleaned in uh, vinegar uh cleaning in the vinegar still worked it, it took off the rust but uh, probably would have been better uh better cleaning better cleaned wise if if they if they were if they were sandblasted but the uh electrolysis with this uh solution right here very easy to make uh and like i said in the, in the in this little container i probably put four tablespoons of the alma hammer super washing soda got it all mixed up and that's it um i like i said i did have a little bit of uh vinegar in there but it uh for the electrolysis solution all you need is 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 that arm hammer super washing soda uh, and you can do it on wh whatever scale you want to, uh, cleaning an engine block or or just cleaning small stuff. But uh, if you decide to do this stuff, please do your research and do it safely. Uh, if you see if in your research, if you see you're supposed to wear gloves, like with this uh, uh, Eastwood solution right here, wear gloves, protect yourself. Where use go in a well ventilated area. This is this. I'm I'm in my storage building. Uh, the uh, I, I had I had the door open, the window open when I when I was doing this stuff, so everything was well ventilated. But uh, there it is, and uh, I will have those, these parts being assembled in in another video. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.